And unmute there. All right, all right. Victoria is rising. Good morning, people of God. It is a blessing to see all of you. 
and to be seen by all of you. There we go. Much better now. God is great. Greatly to be praised. Uh, I'm excited. I'm always excited. I know I say that all the time. But, you know, excited about today's word. Uh, good message. Just a reminder for some. Um, reminder for all, you know. Uh, maybe a new concept for some, but this is something that is definitely needed in our personal lives. Nice, short, quick message for today, but there's a lot there. I pray that you and I, that we will receive everything that God has for us concerning this message today um, with the encouragement to ask and to obey and to expect what God has for us. And I had to change up the music a little bit this morning. I'd been, you know, thinking about that song by the Clark sisters. You know, I expect a miracle. I'm looking for a miracle. And they say, I expect a miracle every day. God will make a way out of no way. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. I've been singing it all morning. It's been on repeat. Um, as I was uh, putting together today's message and kind of getting all the notes and everything in order. And so to God be the glory. Uh, good morning, Pastor Shy, and uh, glorious Victoria is rising to everyone. Uh, Sister Felicia says, good morning, everyone. Sister Shell, good morning. And Victoria is rising to you as well. Victoria is rising. Good morning. Good God morning. Uh, Sister Gina, we thank you. Um, for posting, we thank you for your comments, you know, their encouragement to me and to the others that are in, in there watching and listening. Thank you, family and friends, um, for your support. Uh, God is doing some great things, um, in spite of what we see going on in the world, in spite of what we may even experience or thinking that we're experiencing in our lives right now. God is doing great things. Um, I'm excited, I've been having um, just the time of my life this past weekend every year uh life ministries and me personally um team up with the r3 church and my good friend pastor sam conti and their youth department for their breaking free conference um it's usually held the first weekend in august every year friday saturday sunday like a three-day youth revival recharge worship praise just everything and i've been enjoying myself seeing a move of god and through the midst of it i i can tell you for certain um that i received a miracle um i'm and i'm i'm blessed i let you know i'm, I'm blessed and i want to share that testimony with you that you know i've been experiencing some some major back issues um, for quite a while now, for a number of months, uh, to the degree where it was very difficult for me to walk, to sit, to stand, to lay down, to sleep without pain. And in the midst of what was like, uh, it was some spiritual combat, which goes to show me too, that we, we gonna need to start looking into spiritual warfare and getting a greater understanding of what that means. But let me stick to my testimony right now. And we're in the midst of just trying. I mean, service was heavy. Couldn't understand what was going on, especially in this place that we were at, because, you know, everybody usually praises so freely and everything. But it was worship that was being called for on that particular night and as we fought and as we battled against what was going on as the spirit began to break i began to notice something that i had not noticed that i was walking back and forth across the stage and realized wait a minute i'm walking there's no pain my back's not hurting i can walk freely i can move took a couple of steps um, did a couple little quick dance moves and everything else. And I'm sitting here realizing that I am in the midst of a miracle, that I am receiving what I had been praying for. And before I realized it and knew what was going on, I had already been walking back and forth. I took my focus off my problems and put them solely on God in the midst of what was going on. And he healed me in the midst of all of that. 
And I was, I'll be honest with you, I was wondering to myself, well, Lord, is it just uh, healing in the moment? Do I need to stay in this place of worship uh, in order for this to, to, to remain? And even as I went to sleep that night, got up the next day, Saturday morning, yesterday, uh, got up with no pain, uh, did a little bit of walking, had to run to the store. And I think it was a setup to test uh, so that I can see uh, what was going on with me went to a store their machines was down they were only accepting cash and so i had to find an atm and they told me one direction and the atm was not there had to walk quite far to get to that place where it wasn't just to walk back to the bank and get it from there just to walk back to the store and the whole time i'm walking i'm rejoicing i i, I call shy and say hun uh, I, I just want you to know that I'm walking and I ain't feeling no pain. There's no pain in my back right now. God is indeed good. And so I'm telling you this morning, I want to share that with you this morning and this quick message so that you understand. Listen, I am not the only one who is privy to God's blessing, to God's miracle. But there are things that we have to do in order to make sure that we are in the proper position to get all that God has for us. You know, we, we have to, we sometimes sit around, you know, thinking that God is going to come and bless us one way. And the thing is uh, what uh, about it is that God is so much greater than what we can hope or think or imagine. And sometimes we limit God by our expectations. We have expectations, but sometimes they are so low and our expectations are so in the wrong place that when God wants to bless us, we look at the opportunity for the miracle and we say, that's too big. I can't, or I don't have, or I'm not ready when God is saying, but I can and I will. I just need you to get into position. So today I'm going to talk briefly, just briefly. I understand this. This is a short message, but I suggest you get what you need to get. Pay attention. Don't sit there and say, that's not me. Don't sit there and say, well, I hope. No. It's time for you and I to activate that faith and to walk in what God has for us this morning. Thank you all for coming to prayer on Tuesdays. God is moving. God is answering. God is delivering. Thank you all for coming to Bible study. We in the book of Ecclesiastes and we are going through and listening and hearing what God has to say to us and what he has for us. I'm excited about it. We're going to keep on moving. We're going to keep on pressing to God be the glory. Yes, to God be the glory. That's right. And, and all you thank God for the praises, praise him, claim your miracle. You know, God is indeed God and he is good. That's right. Claim it. Expect the miracle. But in order to expect the miracle, there are some things that we need to do. Yup. It isn't all just on God's hands and then it is, it's well, it is in his hands, but it's not all just on him. We've got to understand that there are some things that we need to uh, incorporate into our being when it comes to what God has for us and receiving and walking in the fullness of God's grace and his mercy and all that he's doing. So let me pull up my notes here. Uh, we are coming from the book of Acts, chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I'm, I'm going to pray in your hearing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask, Lord God, that you would ignite, Lord God, a fire within us. Lord God, that we would receive all that you have for us in this season. Lord God, you said in your word in John 10, 10, that the thief comes but to still kill and destroy. But you have come, O oh Lord, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Father God, not just life abundantly on the other side of glory, but Lord, on this side, Lord, we want life and the life more abundantly that you have for us. So Father God, as we deliver this message today, as we receive this message today, let us walk according to what you have called us to. 
that that miracle we're expecting, that we put ourselves in a place to receive it and stand by while you blow our minds with how great and glorious you are. Let me tell y'all, God is great. He's awesome. I'm excited. I'm happy. Y'all don't understand. Maybe y'all do. I don't know. I'm going to stop saying y'all don't understand. Y'all understand. Look, I, I thank God for the miracle. And he's done great things in my life before. And I and I thank God that he's still doing those things. Y'all don't understand how bad my, I said I was going to stop saying that. But my back was hurting so bad for so long. And I didn't really say too much to too many people about it. Um, but it became obvious, even in the way that I walked that you could tell that there was really something going on. But the, there's a saying in uh, Christendom in the kingdom that says the spirit of expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And that if you want God to do something in your life, then you and I, we must have an expectation that that thing that we want to happen is going to happen. And so we have to understand that, you know, I, I say oftentimes, especially when I'm other places, that we ought to come to church or come into God's presence with expectation. Um, and, and, and that expectation needs to be in the right thing and, and coming from the right place in our hearts and in our minds. There should be an expectation that if I'm in this place and God shows up, I, I expect to feel his presence. I expect to be uh, to, to get something tangible, uh, that, that my joy will be renewed, that my strength will be renewed. I'm, I'm expecting when I hear his word, that I will be encouraged, that I will be directed to the right path, that, that I will be watched as even convicted of my sins and led to a place of repentance that I would respond to all that God is requiring of me those are my expectations i i as the clark sister sing i expect a miracle every day well maybe not quite but we should get to the place where every day we expect the miracles miracles signs and wonders should not be something that happens every now and then uh we were told as a matter of fact in Jesus, Jesus's own words, that miracles, signs, and wonders should follow the preaching of his word. As a matter of fact, that is our prayer at the end of every service and every benediction, that mere we declare that miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow the preaching of the word of God. And yes, there are spiritual miracles that take place when a person gives their soul to Christ, it's like the dead being raised to life. But there are other things that we want to see the manifestation of. Yes, we believe God for miracles and healing. And sometimes we don't give him enough credit. We don't thank him enough when we are, are, are healed from our ailments, when we're rescued from those places, because we think all the time that uh, when it comes to to, to our prayer, we have this mentality that if I pray today, then God has to respond tomorrow. Well, sometimes tomorrow might be next week, or sometimes tomorrow could be next year, or sometimes tomorrow might be many years from now. But God always responds to our prayer, and we have to get to that point where I'm expecting, we've been talking about his plan, his purpose, and his promise. Well, I have to get to that point where I expect his promise to be made. But I have to understand, as we've talked about in the past, that God has a plan and there is a plan that I need to follow. There is a part that he has promised to do if we would watch this obey his word. See, sometimes we try to get the two. We ask and expect, but we missed out the part that calls us to obey. And what God is telling us to do. Victorious Rising, Pastor Juma, great to see you uh, this morning or rather good afternoon where you are. One of the scriptures I want to focus on, that's right, Sister Shell, tell him it's in his time and not your time, not my time. Uh, we want God to move right now as if we're telling him what to do. That's not how this works. We are simply asking God, I need you to move on my behalf and believe you me. When God moves, it's always on time. He's never too late. We might think that situation has gone. We might think like they thought that Lazarus was dead, but instead Jesus said, hey, why y'all worried? His death, this, this sickness is not unto death. He's just sleep. Called him up out the grave. The people ain't know what to do. 
but to give God glory. And sometimes our situations in life look dead, but what we need to stop and do is trust God and give him glory. And when we see that miracle, we need to give him thanks. That is his word to give him thanks in all things. And sometimes we get a piece of the blessing just so we, we can see, because God already knows. Sometimes he blesses us with the little thing to see how we react. Some of you have been getting blessed and not giving God any types of thanks, not giving them any type of credit. You thinking this person, you thinking that person, you're happy that your situations and your fortunes have turned for the better. But what you don't understand or what you're neglecting to, to acknowledge is that it was God who made it possible. And when you and I start learning how to give God thanks in all things, even the things that we think are just little things, we will begin to see the blessings of God manifested in our lives in some big ways. Can God trust you with a thank you? Can God trust you with the spirit of gratitude for what he's doing for you? Or will you and I simply just take what he has and give man the credit or think that we ourselves have done something for ourselves when it's God who's really blessing? Come on, I got to get, I got to get back in my message. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm fussing at somebody right now. I ain't fussing. I'm just trying to get us in the right place where God has us going this morning. So let's look in the book of Acts chapter three, verses one through 10. And I'll put the scriptures up uh, on the screen for you this morning. Um, our, our focus is going to be on, on, on verse number five um, this morning. But we're in Acts chapter three, verses one through 10. And, and I'm reading this morning from the uh, English Standard Version. Uh, you may have different versions that read slightly different. Um, but don't worry, you can still follow along. Forgive me, drink a bit of water. As I've been doing a lot of yelling and praising over this weekend, and I'm going to get some more yelling and praising on this, mor uh, this morning and this afternoon. Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 10 tells us, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, uh, the ninth hour. This was about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple. He was a beggar. They brought him to the temple every day to sit outside the gate and beg. Verse three, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look, at us. Verse number five, and pay attention. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the, the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Come on, somebody needs to understand this. Verse number five, I want you to understand this. Get this in your spirit. It says, and he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. We've got to fix our attention on God, to put our focus on him. When there's something in our lives that is missing, when there's something in our lives that is lacking, we need to fix our attention on the one who provides for us all. We look at man for help. Yes, because man is around us. Yes, because God uses men to bless one another as well as other things. But we need to fix our attention on him. And when we do so, expect to receive something, 
that we're looking for, something that we need. But I'm telling you this morning, there's a little more to it, that there's something that you and I have to do to get it even greater. You'll see that this man, as, as, as some scholars say, was about 40 years old. Maybe he was older. And every day the word of God tells us they carried him to this gate. They never took him into the temple. I wonder why they never brought the man into the house of God. They left him sitting on the outside of the house of God so that he can beg, so that he can ask for something. And if you don't remember a few months ago, we, we did a series on the beggar and the believer, the difference between the mindset of a beggar and the mindset of the believer. And, and, and God corrected our path because oftentimes we pray as beggars, meaning that we pray to God, not fully believing that we're even going to get what we're asking for. But God wants you and I to know, as we're going to see in the scripture, that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can hope, all that that we can act, think, or even imagine. Sometimes we need to fix our expectations because we're asking God for the bare minimum when he's saying, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But this day in particular, as this old man stays laid outside begging, and I call him old, not because of his age, but because of what that he's been through, his testing, his trials, his life was hard. He might have been 40, but every day he was carried because he couldn't walk. So he had been through some things and every day he sat there begging, looking for something just to get by. I always say good enough should never be good enough because we serve a God that is greater than just simply good enough. Expectation is a key, a key, not the key, but is a key to receiving that which the Lord has for us. But there's some additional things that we have to do. You and I have to get that in our minds and we have to understand. Peter said, look at us. And he gave heed, which means, watch this. He looked and he paid attention. He obeyed their command. Oftentimes it's not given in that particular order where we ask and then we obey and then there's an expectation. Because as we remember last week, if you paid attention, when we were talking about jo uh, uh, Joshua, that God told him about the promise before he even gave him the plan. So that there was an expectation that God was going to bring about a particular end. If Joshua and his troops would only follow the plan, there is an expectation of promise that God has given to us that by faith we believe his promises, but we have a tendency to ignore the instructions that he's given us because we find ourselves rather doing things our way. And we feel like God doesn't move on our timing because I prayed yesterday, so I should be blessed today. God, get me out of this situation. And when I wake up tomorrow, I'm still dealing with the same situation. So God, you're not moving fast enough. I have to take this in my own hands. Let me tell you something. Your hands and my hands aren't bigger than God's hands. And so we sit there and we develop, watch this, we develop this expectancy that God will fail us. So I have to have my own plans in case God doesn't come through. Come on. Imagine that just in case God doesn't come through, I, I, I got to make sure that I'm able to do this myself. A man devises his own ways in his heart. He makes his own plans, but the end thereof is death. It's not going to work. Even when it looks successful, it ain't working. Because God is God is not looking. Let, let me tell you something. You and I, we looking at temporal things. We looking at things that don't really matter. We looking at things that when we die, don't go with us. As we were studying in the book of Ecclesiastes, we sitting here working hard for stuff that when we die, guess what? Somebody going to take it. Somebody going to throw it in the trash. Oh, matter of fact, it might not even make it. This shirt I have on in a couple of years or whatever is going to be filled with holes. It's going to fall apart. I'm going to outgrow it. It's going to be in a trash somewhere as hard as I might have worked to 
get it. Tomorrow, that won't matter because I'll need something else. There's always something. But God is looking at eternal things. God wants us to expect eternal things. We're looking for just enough to get by today when God is trying to say, I'm trying to help you get by for life so that you can live this life abundantly. I'm trying to bless you, not just to bless you, but I'm trying to bless you to the overflow that you might be a blessing to others. The man was expecting something. He had a spirit of expectancy. In that instance, he moved from being simply a beggar to a believer. Because the money that he asked for, imagine I'm asking you for money and you're going to tell me gold and silver. I have not. I can't tell you how many times people, even myself, have gone to other people and say, can I just get a couple of dollars for this, a couple of dollars for that? And they said, you know what? I don't have it, but let me pray that God will supply. And I sat there and I turned up my face and I got all vexed on the inside, said, I don't want your prayers. I might not have said it verbally, but my action showed it when I walked away mad. How dare they say they don't have it for me? And, and all the while, God is saying no, because I've got something greater for you. But people keep rescuing you with something that isn't going to last. But what I have for you, like the woman at the well, when she went in John chapter four and Jesus told her about the water that she would never thirst again. She said, well, give me this water because she was looking for something temporary so that she wouldn't have to walk back and forth to the well anymore. But Jesus said, the water I have is greater than the water that's in this well. And when he began to talk to her, she began to understand so much so that she had no more shame because she knew her sins were forgiven. She ran back to the town and told the people, let me introduce you to a man who told me everything about myself, yet he still loves me, yet he still offered me eternity and we're sitting here fighting over something that won't matter tomorrow. Whew. Man, I don't know. I just feel like preaching. I'm fired up this morning. I'm excited. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him, who is him? God, who is able, what? To do super abundantly is the amplified version. Super abundantly more than all that we all that we dare ask or think according to his power that is at work within us. Now unto him who was able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, our greatest hopes, or our greatest dreams according to the power that is at work within us. Within us is the power to receive super abundantly above our expectations. And we sitting here asking for sandwiches when he wants to give us a feast at his table. Come on, I need you to catch that. I need you to, to get that. And we need to get that in our spirits. This man asked for alms. He wanted some money. I just need a little bit of money. To get what I want. I just need a couple of dollars to get me through this day. Lord, if I can, you can just get me to, we sitting here begging, God, if you can just get me to tomorrow. And I know sometimes the situation seems rough. I know it gets hard. And sometimes we're at that point where we feel like all we can ask is for today. But God, you said in your word that you come that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. So God, if I'm not living this abundant life, then there must be something that I'm doing wrong or something that I'm not quite doing right or I'm not meeting certain expectations that you have for me. God, show me myself that I can get it right. Where am I missing? Where am I not connecting? Your word says to obey. I've come and I've asked. I have an expectation. But now that God has done his part by making the promise, he's already provided all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now what must I do? We've stopped asking the question, what must I do? We must understand that there is importance in the power of three. What am I talking about? Thank you, Jesus. 
the power of three just the power of, of, of fullness three represents fullness father son holy spirit three the death the burial and the resurrection three we are made up of body soul and spirit three let's take it to natural terms there's, there's a law of three when it comes to fire you must have three things in order to create fire you need fuel you need heat and you need oxygen if you remove any of those elements, if there's no heat but fuel and oxygen, you can't get fire. If there's oxygen and fuel but no heat, you can't get fire. If there's fuel uh, and, and, and heat but no oxygen, you can't get fire. You remove any of these elements, then you can't get the results that you're looking for. You won't get the results that you need. If you're simply uh, 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 asking and expecting without obeying, guess what? You're not going to fully receive what you need. You won't be able to fulfill fullness the three, what you need to do. We must ask, we must obey, and we must expect. What am I talking about when it comes to expect? Let me give you another word for expect. It's called faith. He asks for alms. They say, look at me. Look at me. And he fixed his attention. Watch this. He asked for something from someone and he wasn't even looking at them. He held his head down in shame. Can I please have some money? We are to come, watch this, the word of God tells us that we are to come boldly before his throne of grace. Mm. We ask him as children, not as beggars. How many times do we go in prayer with our heads held down in shame? Oh, oh God, can, can, can you please just give me this? Instead of boldly coming before our father, our heavenly father, Lord, I have a need. And your word says that you shall supply all of my needs. In your word, you are called Jehovah Jireh, as Abraham declared, for you shall provide. God, I need to know you as my provider. And sometimes the miracle may happen right away, but sometimes the miracle takes time because you and I have to grow to a place where we're obedient to following God's word. Watch this. And we can be trusted with that which we've asked for. Five-year-old kids want to drive their daddy's cars, their mommy's cars or whatever. But we know that they are not mature enough, nor have they had the training to do such a thing. Does not mean that they will never do it. It means that they must grow into a level of maturity to be able to handle the responsibility and then be trained in that area. And sometimes we're asking God for money and blessings. Now, I'll stick with money because that's that that's what I'm feeling in my spirit. We asking God for money, but we don't know how we asking him for a million dollars and we can't manage a hundred. We're asking God for a mansion and I, I want a big five bedroom house, but, but you can't manage the two bedroom apartment. You asking God for a luxury car, you don't even take care of your bike. And we have these expectations in wrong places and wrong things because the world has taught us or the world has told us that we can have it our way. What do you want? Instead of what does God want for me? This man operated in the power of three. And I'm encouraging us this morning to operate in the power of three. That when we ask, we obey and we expect. And then we trust that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Oof. You may have asked God for something in your life. You may have asked them to give you money to pay bills, uh, but God said, ask uh, in my name and, and, and be obedient to my word and expect something greater and watch me blow your mind. You, you, you want money to, 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 to pay your bills, but he wants to take you completely out of debt. He said, I don't want you to have to owe anything. I want you, matter of fact, I want you to be in a place where you can get ahead of it. 
I want you to get in a place where you can feel secure enough that when the bill comes, you look at it and you say, you know what? I ain't even worried about that. I thank God. I thank God. Y'all don't understand because there was a time in our lives where Shy and I would look at bills before they would even come. We just see the envelope and we would fret wondering, okay, what do we have to give up to get this done? Not even knowing how much it costs. You don't understand. Uh, uh, some of y'all get it. Been at times and places where you get a bill and you look at this bill and you look at that bill and you look at this and that and you're sitting around wondering, hmm, one of y'all not getting paid this month. So which one can I let go? Which one won't be shut off? Or which one can I do without for a little while? Or maybe I won't eat this. Or maybe I can't get that. Y'all don't understand. There were times when I would struggle do we pay the rent or do I get my medicine and live? But after a while, we stopped trying to do things our way. We put our trust in God and God gave us specific instructions on what to do, on where to go, on how to be. And let me tell you something, miraculously, due to our obedience, the things begin to change. Atmospheres begin to shift. The way that we lived began to, to, to grow. And before we knew it, God was moving us up and moving us out. And God was making promotions happen for positions that we were not qualified for. And God was opening doors that we were not qualified to go into. But God said, because I called you to it, because you were obedient to my word, because when the world told you to try another way to do something else, you said no, because my God would not be honored. And in the midst of everything you were going through, you still stopped the worship. You still stopped to give me praise. You still trusted me even when you felt like you was losing your life even when you felt like everything was falling apart you trusted me with the broken pieces i told you there is beauty in your troubles that i would give you double for your trouble and you listened to my promises Whew. god wants to blow our minds exceedingly abundantly above all he can ask or think let me tell you something it did not happen overnight as a matter of fact it took a couple of lean years to get to where we are right now and some of y'all are getting frustrated because what you prayed for yesterday didn't happen today and now you're ready to run from god you better anchor in you better buckle down you better strap up your boots you better act like a child of God. Stop acting like a beggar, taking whatever the world wants to give you. Know that your God is your God. Know that he is all that he says he is. Know that his promises are yes and amen. Know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I ask, hope, think, or even imagine. So I need to expand my expectations. Lord, increase my faith. But while you're doing it, you better be obedient to what God is calling you to. We're asking them for jobs to help make our ends meet. Just to get by. Whew. But he wants to give you a career so that you can be a blessing to yourself and to others. You keep asking for a little more time, but God wants you to get ready because he wants to restore. I hear it in the spirit that there is a promise of restoration, like in Joel chapter two, when he says, I'm restoring the years that the canker worm and the locust and the caterpillar is stolen. God wants to start restoring some things that you've lost, but you're not in position to receive what God has for you. And now you've got to go through another season of lack and another season of discord in another season of disunity before you get back to that place where God recycles the season and gets you to a place where you can get what he has for you. Whew. But we don't want to obey. We want to we, we want to pay their loan instead of trusting God. And we get nervous and we get scared. When God starts moving things out the way, oh, because we don't want to lose that because we're too busy holding on to temporal things. Uh, but God, you don't understand. I, I, I like my iPhone. I, I really like uh, I like having this because everybody else has one. And if I don't have one, then they're going to look at me funny, God. And you don't understand. And, 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 and you know, I, I, I need uh, 837 channels, even though I only watch three. I, I, I need to, to, to pay a, a $800 cable bill. But but Lord, I, I, I know 
why I don't have money for the rent. Uh, 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 God, I, I like steak and I like lobster. Um, you know how I like to eat. Lord, I like fancy things just because I don't have a lot of money don't mean that I can't have the best things in life. Uh, uh, sometimes you need to tighten up your belt and cut back. Uh, sometimes you need to cut your TV off and learn other options. Uh, you got every streaming platform and don't watch nothing and you're wasting money and you're throwing it away and you keep asking God and you keep begging God to do this and to do that. And God has been giving you answers, but you won't respond because he hasn't given you what you want, what you think you need. You trying to make God answer to your plans. And he says, no, I'm giving you directions on how to have life and to have it more abundantly. But you keep running out, trying to waste what I'm giving you. You keep running out, trying to do things your way and then get mad at me when you don't get what you think you deserve. And God is saying you deserve greater because I've called you to greater. But until you respond to the call, until you walk in the walk in the calling that God has called you to, you won't get to the destination that God wants to bring you to. I didn't think I was going to be preaching this morning. I thought I was going to say this word and get up out the way and move on. But I feel it down in my spirit. God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I have towards you. He says, I know. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Other version says, I know, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to, to, to bring you to a place of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected and his expected end. The plans he has for you, for me, for us, for we. But we trying to tell God what we want in our lives. God, this is who I want to be. And this is what I want to do. My position at work is something that I never longed for, that I never dreamed for. That I tried to run from for years. Even seeing how my career ahead of time was leading up to that point. And God said, I have this for you because I know the plan I have for you because I know where you're going. I need you to trust me and to follow my lead. You want to be blessed, but you don't want to obey. I'm talking to somebody today. You want to be blessed, but you don't want to obey. You want God's best, but you want to give him your least. Mm. Mm. God, I want the best of all you have for me, but I ain't willing to give you nothing. Whew. Help me, Holy Spirit. In the word of God, there's a story about the widow of Zarephath. In 1 Kings, it's on your screen right there. 1 Kings chapter 17. In particular, in verses uh, seven through sixteen, and 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 I'm, I'm going to paraphrase because I'm I'm going to move on. I want to hit three points and then I'm done. But in this story, the the prophet came to see her. There was a drought in the land. Uh, there was famine in the land. Uh, there was a recession. Come on, somebody pay attention. Uh, there there was lack in the land. The land was not able to produce what the people were going to need uh, to 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 live abundantly. As a matter of fact, uh, the land was not yielding what was probably even needed uh, to barely get by. And so this lady was out doing her thing, and the Lord has sent the prophet to her. Uh, see, here's where obedience comes into play uh, because he was on a mission. He obeyed God. And because he obeyed God, God took him to somewhere else. So sometimes I want you to understand that your obedience and my obedience sometimes leads to someone else's obedience for the miracle to happen. Everything we do ain't about us. So get over yourself because I need to get over myself too. Everything that we say, think, and do ain't about us because sometimes God wants to use us so that someone else can get the blessing and the breakthrough and the miracle that they need. But I want you to pay attention to the story as I paraphrase. Go back and read it yourself. The first Kings 17, 7 through 16. So the prophet asked the woman, what are you doing? She said, I'm out here just gathering some twigs. I guess she was about to make a little bit of uh, fire for herself. She said, I've got just a little bit. When I go back home, uh, I got a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And I'm going to make a cake. Uh, I'm going to make some bread or a biscuit for, for me and my son. We're going to eat and then we're going to die. She just had barely enough. Her expectations 
expectation was that what I have will not be enough for me and my child to make it. Something has to happen. Something's going to happen. And I'm fearing that it's going to be death. But the man told her, uh, can you get me a little water? And so she was obedient to the small task. Watch this. That small thing sometimes that comes our way where God is just trying to test our obedience, not because he doesn't know, but he's trying to show us something. And so he asked us to do this small thing. Can you just give me some water? And she got the man water and he said, well, I know you're going to go bake whatever, ever you and your son, but which is what I need you to do. I need you to bake something for me first and then go and do as you were going to do. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I just told you I barely have enough to get by and me and my son are going to eat and die. And you're asking for some of what I feel like I don't have. And God has been asking you and requesting you to give up that very thing that you're holding on to because you think that that thing is what's giving you life. And God wants you to know that thing that you think is giving you life is actually the sacrifice that he's requesting to take you into the overflow. But you don't want to let it go because that temporary thing means so much to you because you and I are so afraid of what we won't have that we don't realize that God has something greater in store for us if we would just let it go. But the woman, watch this, without hesitation, went ahead and did as the prophet said, and the promise of God reigned forth, for he told her, your flower pot will never be empty. Your pot of oil will never run dry. It's an echo of a miracle that happened before. And we see later on that the, the, the other woman, as she got oil upon oil upon oil upon oil, that it did not stop until she was unable to fully grasp and hold what God had for her. If we would just be obedient, let go of those temporary, temporal, don't matter in the long run things that God has told us to give up for his glory, for his eternity, for our eternal benefit, we won't see that blessing. She was blessed. She was blessed. Three things you got to have. Let's jump on that real quick. Y'all know me. I like my list. You must ask it in the name of Jesus. Now, I told you before, asking in the name of Jesus, that ain't the, the end all be all. You don't just go ask for what you want in Jesus name. No, it's, it's not my will, Lord God, but your will be done. When I'm asking in Jesus name is, is because I'm coming to God and the authority that Jesus Christ has given me. And I'm requesting that his will be done, that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that he would give us this day our daily bread and, and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us, that he would lead us not into temptation, but the deliver us from all evil because his is the kingdom. His is the power and the glory forever and ever in Jesus name. Amen. What I'm saying at the end of it is that God, I'm coming to you with the right mindset in the right character, in the right frame of mind. Uh, I'm coming to you with, with the intentions as best as I know, but Lord, I'm asking these things in Jesus name. If we ask anything in Jesus name, according to the will of the father, he will give those things for us. His desire is not for us to be and lack. His desire is not for us to live in shame, but he has desired for us to live and to have life more abundantly that we might be examples of the glory of God here on earth. Two, we must be obedient to his will and to his word. Should almost be word number one. What good is it? We're going to say, I'm going to do this in Jesus name. But you're doing it in your own name, in your own power, in your own authority. And then you want to hashtag God bless. And then get mad when you don't get the God's results. But God, you said, and he's sitting back. Yeah, I know what I said. But I also told you this. You remember the promise. You know, we like children sometimes. Well, mom, you said uh, that, that we could go to, I don't know, we can go to the amusement park this weekend. Yes, but I told you you could go to the amusement park this weekend if you ate all your food, did the dishes, and cleaned your room without me having to yell at you and fuss at you to do it. Oh, obedience to what he's told us. We want the reward without being obedient to the work. 
Number three, we must have a spirit of expectancy, a.k.a. we must have faith. Faith and experience of expectancy is, is similar. We've got to expect, as we started off in the intro with the Clark sisters, I expect a miracle every day. But if we want God to do something in our life, if we want to go to another level, if we're looking for healing, if we're looking for deliverance, if we're looking for joy, if we're looking for financial breakthrough, if we're looking for happiness, if we're looking for that home, if we're looking for that job, if we're looking and we want and we desire that husband and we desire that wife, then we need to get out of that beggar mentality of, of, of shamefully asking, not really truly expecting what we're asking for to receive that thing and grow. Grab hold of our faith and our expectancy that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask, hope, think, or even imagine. But we must be obedient and fix our eyes and our attention on him and do as he said. That's it. That's all I got for you today. That's all I'm saying today that many of us, I, I, I thank God for the miracle. I listened to my own testimony as I was saying, and I was listening to myself. And I said, I get it. Because through the whole time dealing with all this, I kept speaking in private. I'll let you know about my private conversation. I kept speaking to my wife and others that were close to me that I want to quit. I want to give up. I don't want to do this pastor thing no more because this pain is hurting me. Sitting in this chair is hurting me. Walking is hurting me. And all this pain is, is making me feel negative. And all of this negativity got my thoughts and my mind running other places when I need to be focused on God. I feel like I can't hear his voice because I'm so focused on the pain. I'm getting caught up in the distractions that I'm missing God. And yes, there would be God opportunities that would rise up in, the, in between where I was being tested. Will you be faithful? Instead of doing what you want to do, will you do what I've called you to do? And I thank God that I've answered the call when he said, now I need you to go or I need you to say or I need you to do or I need you to give because I understand what obedience brings. He tells us obedience is greater than sacrifice. But there's nothing like the obedient sacrifice. When we give that thing up that God is calling us to give up. God never takes away without blessing us with greater. You look at the life of Joseph. Despised by his brothers, sold into a pit. Sold in, uh, thrown into a pit, excuse me, sold into slavery falsely accused of rape, thrown into prison, forgotten by those that he blessed, later on remembered and elevated from the pit to the palace, literally elevated to second in command. All so that he could be a blessing to others and those who sought to despitefully use him and abuse him. And when he had the opportunity for revenge, he took mercy on them. He let them know what you meant for evil, what the devil meant for evil. God turned around for good because God knows the eternal things. Yes, he went through some hardship. Yes, he went through some pain. Yes, he went through some dark times, I'm sure. But through it all, he trusted God. It's one of my favorite scriptures, Genesis 39, verse 2. He was successful because everywhere he went, God was with him. And he knew that and he trusted that. We look at Job and all that Job lost in his life. But when you get to the end, when you get to the last chapter, when you get to those last verses, the word of God literally says, but God restored double and blessed him double and his latter was greater than his former. Job was blessed greater than what he had. When you look at all that Job lost in my mind, I still can't wrap my mind around it. How could it be greater? 
But God's word says that it was. It was greater. God wants you and I to know that our ladder is greater. What you're going through right now is nothing to be compared to the glory that's waiting. But some of us get so stuck on glory in heaven that we miss that God wants us to live that life here so that others might see and know and trust in him. You and I have a testimony and that testimony matters. Matter of fact, we have testimonies. And sometimes you need to stop and testify to yourself and remind yourself what God got you out of. And then go back and think of how step by step when you was in whatever situation you were in that God delivered you from, what brought it all together? What got you to the point where you got on your knees and began to cry out? What is it that you had to do? Because I believe, I know you had to do something in order to see that promise, that miracle manifest. I know just in the example I gave earlier today about the struggles we had financially, about our living situation, that there were things that we had to do to set in place. And yes, at times it seemed like the situation got worse, but God was simply drawing back the arrow so that he can launch us into where he needed us to be. And I'm telling you that even now the arrow is being drawn back yet again because God has further for us to go. Go. Yes, there were some people who walked side by side and said, this is not for me. And yes, we could get angry. Yes, we could be upset. But I understand it might not be your season, uh, but it's mine. And I'm declaring that I'm walking into my season of manifestation because I will believe the report of the Lord and I will follow his plan for my life. I pray for those that are watching today, just as I started out, especially those, one, for those who do not know him as Lord and Savior, because none of this matters without him. None of it matters without Jesus Christ in your life. There are some really good people who do some really good things that are going straight to hell when it's all over. Simply because they do not know Christ. Simply because they refuse to know Christ. Simply because they reject him. You don't believe me? It's in the word. The rich man and Lazarus, the homeless guy. The rich man was where? In hell, looking across the great chasm to what was going in heaven as the man who sat outside his home begging was in the bosom of Abraham. He longed for just what he could have, wished that his life was different. All your money, all your houses, all your cars, all, all these status symbols don't mean anything in the end. Because when we die, guess what? We can't take none of it with us. Uh, look at Egypt. Look at the tombs. Look at all that stuff. All the gold is there. The bodies are dead. Dust, dirt, mummified, nothing. All their precious jewels and everything else stayed behind. I wonder, I don't have to wonder, but I say I wonder what happened to their souls. People out here in the street killing over temporal things. Stuff that don't matter. Working their fingers to the bone for gold and jewels. My word tells me that when I get to heaven, that's the street I'm walking on. Come on now. That's the street. That's the street we walking on. But to get there, I need to know how to get there. Jesus Christ says, 
in John uh, 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So today I want to offer you something. Uh, it is the gift of salvation. Nobody can buy it. You can't earn it. You can't do good works. It is a free gift given by the grace of God, and you just have to have the faith to receive it. God gives this gift, and he uses us to bring the offering of his gift to those who have yet to receive it. And you may be watching this today and say, I have never prayed that prayer, or maybe I have, but I'm not sure. But now is the opportunity for you and I to call upon the name of the Lord. For he says, whomever calls upon the name of the Lord shall in no way be put to shame. So God, we're believing you today that those who are not saved will simply say, Jesus, save me now. See, we don't have to overcomplicate things with all the fancy words. Sometimes it's just Jesus, save me. I need you in my life. Forgive me of my sins. Be Lord and Savior. Don't just save me, but be my Lord. Teach me how to live. I want to be reconciled to the greatness that God has called me to from the very beginning before Adam messed up. That's what he wants to call us back to. That's what he wants to restore us to. That promise. That's who we are. Not even the greatest of who we think we are can even match the greatness that God has called us to. So God, I want you to help me to be that, to be that light here on on earth to be an emissary, to be an ambassador of your word, that people will look at me as I reflect your glory and send them back to you. Father God, I want to give you thanks in all things and knowing, Lord God, that it is because of you that I live, that I move, that I'm able to. And if you said that prayer, you said something like that. Let us know. Man, I, I can't tell you how much I rejoice over those emails, rejoice over the phone calls, rejoice over the conversations of those that have given their lives to Christ. As a matter of fact, heaven rejoices for every soul that comes to the kingdom. And if heaven is throwing a party, who am I not to? Who are we not to? We all have sinned. We've all messed up. We all were in need of a savior. Sometimes, even living in a saved state, we mess up. But we need to be like the prodigal and go back home. You might be watching this. You might be listening to this whenever. You say, I've done messed up. That's me. I've been asking. I've been expecting. But I haven't been obeying. Well, I, my Bible, I don't know. It's collecting dust somewhere. Uh, my knees, no, they haven't bent. My head hasn't bowed in prayer in a long time. You might be saying, I feel so far gone that I don't really know what to do. Where do I start? Father, forgive me. That's where you start. Those three words, Father, forgive me. And then let your heart speak the rest. Get back into your word. Get back into the plan that God has for you. Listen, last thing I'm, I'm going to say, and then, you know, closing announcements and all that good stuff. The attacks of the enemy in your life, the hell that you're going through. Every situation that you're dealing with that comes from the enemy, it's not random. The enemy's attacks are strategic and purposeful. He is not wasting time in what he's doing. Our prayer life should not be random. Our Bible study time should not be random. And the reason why we can't deal with the strategic attacks is because we're throwing random weapons that don't work. We're randomly grabbing things and hoping that it sticks. When God wants us to be strategic in how we operate, he wants to give us plans. He gave Joshua plans. He gave David plans. He, he, he skilled them in the art of war. Well, our warfare is different now for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. Watch this. Not through my hands, not through my plans, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Three simple words. 
We're talking about threes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, mind, body, and soul. Fuel, heat, oxygen. Father, forgive me. One, two, three. Father, forgive me. If you forget everything I said and just grab on to that, Father, forgive me. Feel him. Know that he's there. Father God, I pray for everyone who is watching, including myself, that we not just be spectators of your words. Let us not deceive ourselves by simply hearing and not doing what you said. Father God, let us take heed, focus our attention on you, and follow the orders, the directions, the plans that you have given us. And Lord God, teach us patience. Teach us, Lord God, to know that every answer, every question will not be answered right away. That every request is heard immediately. But sometimes things take time. Lord, even as you told Daniel, when his prayer went up immediately, you sent forth an answer. But the angel told him, that the prince of Persia, that the enemy, the devil, was fighting that answer from reaching him. And Lord, sometimes the things that we are asking for, the enemy has fought to keep us from hearing. But Daniel fasted and waited till he heard from you. Lord God, teach us when to fast and how to fast and what to fast. Lord God, that we might hear from you. Because you said that some things only come by fasting and praying. And you said that when you fast, not if you fast, but when you fast. So it is something that we should do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray that you would strengthen and encourage everyone, including myself. Lord God, not only did we see the miracles, Lord God, that we maintain the miracles. Lord, help us to be obedient to your word that in all things we give you thanks, no matter how minor we might think they are. Lord God, let us never give man glory that belongs to you. And Father, forgive us when we go wrong, when we go astray. Lead us back to you. Lord, let us know that we can come home and be restored to our kingship, our sonship, in you. God, I thank you and I bless you and I praise you. And Lord, we love you because you first loved us with a love so great, nothing on this earth could ever match it. And I thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, we thank you for taking this time, There's other things that you probably could do and want to do, but I thank you for watching and for hearing and for listening to what God is saying to us through this vessel. If there are any other prayer requests, feel free to let us know. You can send us a message, drop it in the comments. Uh, those who know our contact information is on our page as well as on the website where you can leave prayer requests in our prayer box. We will get that email um, to reach out. We thank you for those who give because giving is, is a part of ministry. Giving is a part of worship and a part of service. And we need to continue to keep our trust in God that what we give we pray that God will bless it. Now, if man takes it and does something they're not supposed to do with it, then shame on them. But don't let that stop you from giving how God has instructed you to give. I pray over things that I give because I never want my help to be a hindrance. Every homeless person or person I see begging for money, there's times where you just have to keep it moving. 
because you may be giving them money to fund something that's just not right for them. So we use wisdom and we act accordingly. But when it comes to the house of God, we give, we sow a seed, we bless. And that's all we're simply asking. If this ministry, if right now this word has been a blessing to you, sorry, there's ways that you can give via cash app, the dollar sign, the word live, L-I-V-E, four, W-A-R-D, that's dollar sign, live forward, or via our webpage at www.life-ministries.net. We have a giving page with all of this information on it. Or you can find us on PayPal at Living Forward Christian Center, which is our incorporation um, name and where we do business. Um, as always, we thank you. We love you. With the love of God, I want you to continue to live forward. I will give the benediction in the final. Amen. Um, good to see you, Pastor Steph. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. That's my, my buddy, DJ Coldplay. Uh, one third of the Coach Gang and the podcast will be airing. Look out for that um, as I join my brothers um, in this next season of what God is doing. Uh, we're looking to have some fun, touch on some really great topics um, as we bridge um, the gap between uh, the culture of the world and the kingdom culture. I know I kind of messed that all up, but don't even worry about that. Um, so as we give the benediction, if all hearts and minds are filled. We don't want all hearts and minds empty. All hearts and minds are filled because we've received what God has for us this morning. And so we pray, loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for feeding us with your word and encouraging us during this time of fellowship. We pray. Lord God, that you will take us and use us to love you and to serve you in the power of your spirit and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and heavenly father, we declare according to Isaiah 55, 11, that every word, every word, every word in agreement with your will shall not return empty. It shall accomplish what you desire and it shall succeed in the matter for which it was sent. We speak as the oracles of God. We preach the gospel boldly and with power. We declare that miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow the preaching of your holy word. We declare your word over our health, our relationships, our children's, our finances, our ministries, and our destinies, and we declare it all in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen and amen. As always, we look forward to seeing you guys on uh, Tuesday night in prayer, uh, Thursday night during our Bible roundtable, and be on the lookout for the Culture Gang podcast um, airing on Monday nights at 7 p.m. To God be the glory. We love you all to life. Have a blessed everything. Live forward.